Okay, so we got our goals done. That was a lot of fun. Congratulations on getting math and English completed and maybe even another goal. Now it's time to talk about Collaborate. Collaborate is a structured group activity. Everybody's gonna participate in this and we typically will do it in the middle of the day. Although with your guide, your group is allowed to decide to change your schedule and do whatever works for you. But uh, Collaborate, there's multiple different versions. I'm gonna talk right now about a discussion. This is called a Socratic discussion and it's named after Socrates. Have you heard of him before? He was a famous philosopher in ancient Greece a long, long time ago. And his, uh, one of his big ideas was that if you get people together and you ask good questions and you have a conversation, you can actually learn without having one person standing there as the teacher that knows everything. Uh, so the group's able to learn together through discussion and you can ask good questions. The way we're gonna do discussions is one of you in your class will be in charge of that day's discussion. Typically, your guide will say that in the morning, like today it is Billy Bob Joe's turn. That Billy Bob Joe is my pretend guy that I use for, uh, for my training. So it's Billy Bob Joe's turn to be in charge of the discussion. Billy Bob Joe will go over here to Newzella. So you guys have seen Newzella before. And I'll say, hmm, what's going on with, whoa, what's this? Roasted guinea pig and fried spiders are on display at a new food museum. Ooh, that sounds weird. I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna take a look at it and read it, and if I think it's interesting enough to have a discussion about it as a class, I will send this to the rest of my class. I can either just tell them to go to Newzella and find it, so I can tell them what to search for, or if we wanna be really fancy, I can go, I can click on that and copy the link, Control C, and I can go open my email and send it by email if you want. I use Gmail for mine, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So there's different ways to, to get that out. Probably the easiest one would just be to tell your uh, class to go up here, search for, or show them how you found it, and they can search for that article. Uh, you want everyone to read the same article, and that can be part of their conquer time that day. You rem remember how we had to read one article? Well, everyone can read the same article that day when it's your turn to be in charge of the discussion because you say, hey, everyone make sure to read this article. We're going to discuss it. Everyone will have these papers. So Billy Bob Joe, who's in charge of the discussion, will make sure that everybody has a paper um, to prepare for the discussion. Discussion prep means prepare, um, preparation. So the name, that's my name, I'll write it down. My name's Kelly, I'll put the date, today's January 3rd, and I'll circle, for most people, participant, because that means I'm participating in the discussion. Um, Billy Bob Joe, as the leader of this activity, by the way, you'll write Billy Bob Joe here for the leader, and you'll write Gross Food Museum for the topic, because that's what the, the article is about. And then you write the name of the article. Billy Bob Joe, the leader, will assign one person to be the observer for the discussion. The observer's job is interesting because they will not participate. They will not be speaking in the discussion. They sit silently and listen to what everyone else does and says in the discussion. And then they are the ones that give out the scores. That's gonna lead to the coins that you put into Prenda. So uh, they're helping, their job as an observer is to help you and everyone participating that you can do a good job participating in the discussion. We'll talk a little bit about what that means. But for right now, and this happens in the morning during the, like after conquer time, you spend some time preparing for the discussion, you get these papers out, you write all those things down at the top, and then you're taking notes about the article. So for example, I'd go over here and I'd read about this museum. Would you like some maggot cheese, fried tarantula, or a bat? How about fried locusts, grasshoppers, or rotten sea herring? Ew, this is grossing me out. Uh, there's a disgusting food museum in Los Angeles, California. So you can ask now, once I've, I've written down some notes, I'm over here with my paper writing down, okay, there's this museum in Los Angeles. It's a disgusting food museum. And, um, and then here at the bottom, this is probably the most important part, is everyone that prepares for the discussion will come with three questions to ask the group. These are questions that we're going to ask and stimulate a conversation. So I ask something and then someone else in the group will be able to say what they think about that, and we can have a conversation about it. So open questions. Um, a good question is not a yes or no answer. So like, for example, I could say, is there a disgusting food museum? And the answer would be yes. 
But if you imagine a discussion where one person asks, is there a disgusting food museum? And someone else says, yes, that's not a really meaningful discussion. That's not a discussion where people learn things together. Um, so a better question would be an open question, which doesn't just have a yes or no answer. Um, sometimes the kids in my class might say something like, where is the disgusting food museum? Or what are some of the things that are in the disgusting food museum? And that's a better question because it at least leads to some conversation, but it, it still kind of stops at the facts, right? You're just talking about, well, we know that there's spiders there and there's guinea pig. Um, a better question, the best type of question, is a question that will make you think, right? So what about a question like, why would anyone open a disgusting food museum? Why would anyone go to a disgusting food museum? Is there anyone that likes these kinds of foods? And if they do, why? So you see these kinds of questions are gonna to lead to thinking. And the idea of a discussion is to bring good questions and then think about them together, have a good discussion where everyone can participate. So you, when you're finished with these and everyone's done, Billy Bob Joe will tell everybody, okay, bring your papers. We're gonna go sit in a circle. You can do this around a table. You can do it on couches in the living room. You can do it um, on the floor, anywhere you wanna do it. Uh, it's up to your, your group and your class. Talk to your guide about it. Um, but once you've, you've set up, everyone comes and Billy Bob Joe will trigger the discussion by saying, this is why I thought this was interesting. I wanted to discuss, I wanted to learn about this. I read this article, I thought, oh, that looks weird. So I thought it would be a fun thing to discuss. And then the discussion starts. Remember the guide, the adult that's with you is not talking in this discussion. So this is just the kids. And you guys are gonna be talking to each other and trying to help each other have a good conversation. And then the other person who doesn't talk is called the observer. We talked about this before. One person has been designated the observer. Billy Bob Joe as the leader gets to choose someone and they're gonna write everyone's name down on this list. So here's Amy, here's Anna, here's Mark, all the different names of the people that are participating in the discussion. And then the three things that, that they're gonna get scores for are if they're involved in the discussion, if they're respectful and if they're insightful. Let's talk about each one of those. So involved means that they speak, that they participate in the discussion. They could say anything. What I do when I'm scoring this is I'll just put a, a little mark each time they talk and they can get zero to four points. So if you sit silently through the whole discussion, you'll get zero, zero points for, um, for being involved because you didn't say anything or do anything. But if you speak and participate at least four times in the discussion and feel free to do more than that, um, then you'll get the full points for involved. That's the easiest one to get the points for. And the person that's evaluating will listen and pay attention to who's speaking and who's participating and then make sure they write down um, and keep track of those points. So involved, zero to four. The next one's respectful. So if somebody's, um, maybe they're, they're talking in the conversation, but they're not talking to the group. They're shouting something to um, the neighbor's cat or maybe they're rolling around on the floor you know, or doing headstands or something, it's really distracting for the rest of the conversation. That person isn't being very respectful to the group. We want, respectful means we are all trying to make it a great event or a great discussion. Like I'm trying to help by sitting quietly, listening to what other people say, answering their questions, asking my questions. A really good job being respectful would even look for people that maybe are feeling shy or left out and include them in the conversation. Right, So sometimes a discussion will be so exciting that everyone wants to talk and there's maybe one person in the group that doesn't feel comfortable speaking up. Respectful in that case means, hey, you know, Tony, will you say what, what you thought? I can tell that you have something to say, uh, but maybe they weren't able to get their, their words out. So respectful, you can get three points for really doing a good job of talking nicely to people, um, sitting still, listening, and including everyone in the conversation respectful behavior. The last one, this is the hardest one to do, is called insightful. Insightful means that you are adding to the thinking of the conversation. So for example, what if you sat, sat um, respectfully, quietly, and listened to what other people say, but every time it was your turn to talk, you could say, I smashed a pumpkin pie into my sister's face, right? You could say that, but that wouldn't be have anything to do with the discussion, unless the discussion was about smashing pumpkin pies. But in our case, you know, we're talking about a museum and why that exists. To say, I smashed a pumpkin pie, that doesn't really add to the conversation. So insightful 
means you're adding to the conversation. Like for example, if you listen to what someone says and you say, oh, I've never thought of that before. What about this too? And you can like add that way, and make it an interesting discussion for everybody that's involved. Insightful is the hardest one, but if you keep practicing with these and do this every week, you guys will get better at discussions and you'll be able to learn how to um, get this format down and have great discussions that are really helpful for everyone. Um, and I wish you all the best. I love these discussions. It's super fun to have this opportunity um, to do that. So, okay, have a good one with, enjoy the discussions and I will talk to you soon about debates.